Thank you. And hello, Durrell. I love Durrell. Hello, Miami, and hello, Florida. Thank you. There is nowhere else I'd rather be on this beautiful, cold, very cold summer evening than right here in the middle of the 10th hole. Beautiful hole, isn't it? Look at that lake, isn't it beautiful? On one of the greatest golf courses on earth, and we really want to thank all of the tens of thousands of people that showed up. This is a lot of people. This is a lot of people. As the world can see, we are under the leadership. The Republican Party is bigger, stronger, more vibrant, and more united than ever, ever, ever before. Every day we are welcoming more Americans to our ranks, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, young people, old people, union members, non-union members. Basically, everyone is joining our movement because it's a movement of common sense. It's common sense. Whatever happened to common sense in government, we've got it. We've got more than anybody's ever had. Meanwhile, the radical left Democrat Party is divided in chaos and having a full-scale breakdown, all because they can't decide which of their candidates is more unfit to be president, sleepy, crooked Joe Biden or laughing Kamala. Laughing Kamala. As you know, in our recent debate, and in honor of all of you, I dealt Joe Biden even according to the fake news media, the most decisive and overwhelming defeat in the history of presidential debates. I think so, right? I think so. And that was a big crowd that was watching. That was one of the highest rated shows ever on television, so I'm honored to be a part of it. I don't think he's too happy, but, you know, I like being a part of it. But even CNN said, as I walked off the stage that it was one of the greatest performances they've ever seen. But it was sort of easy, if you want to know the truth. Our victory was so absolute that Joe's own party now wants him to throw in the towel and surrender the presidency after a single 90-minute performance. They want Crooked Joe out of the race. It's a shame the way they're treating him. But don't feel sorry for him. He's a very bad guy. He weaponized government. Remember that. He's a very bad guy. Don't feel sorry for him. So tonight, I'm officially offering Joe the chance to redeem himself in front of the entire world. So Marco and Byron and everybody, here's what we're going to do. You guys can be referees if you like. Let's do another debate this week so that sleepy Joe Biden can prove to everyone all over the world that he has what it takes to be president. But this time it will be man to man, no moderators, no holes barred. Just name the place anytime, anywhere. And in the debate, Sleepy Joe also declared that he wanted to test his skills and stamina against mine on the golf course. Can you believe this? Did you ever see him swing? He's like this. That's why this evening, I am also, and this is in honor of you and everybody here, this is 45,000 people. That's a lot of people. I'm also officially challenging Cricket Joe to an 18-hole golf match right here. On Doral's Blue Monster, considered one of the greatest tournament golf courses anywhere in the world, one of the great courses of the world. It will be among the most watched sporting events in history, maybe bigger than the Ryder Cup or even the Masters. And I will even give Joe Biden 10 strokes aside, 10 strokes, that's a lot. That means 20 strokes in case you don't play golf. I will give him 10 strokes aside, and if he wins, I will give the charity of his choice, any charity that he wants, one million dollars. And I'll bet you he doesn't take the offer, I would bet, he, because he's all talk. But what that match will do is prove that Joe is in fact all talk and no action. 
but on many things, not just golf. When pilots walk into the White House, he says he used to fly planes. He didn't. When truckers come in, he says he used to drive a truck. He didn't. When Jewish people are here, he always attended synagogues, he said. The Jewish people, he didn't attend the synagogue. Did he ever see a synagogue? He doesn't know what a synagogue is. When black people come, he spent his Sundays in black churches. All of it's false, all of it's fake. He's a fake. Unfortunately, he was like that in Afghanistan. He was like that with Russia, Ukraine, and he was like that on October 7th and the attack in Israel. He didn't know what he was doing. But whatever else can be said about crooked Joe Biden, you have to give him credit for one brilliant decision, probably the smartest decision he's ever made. He picked Kamala Harris as his vice president. No, it was brilliant because it was an insurance policy, maybe the best insurance policy I've ever seen, Marco. If Joe had picked someone even halfway competent, they would have bounced him from office years ago, but they can't because she's got to be their second choice. She has no choice and no chance. As vice president, Kamala Harris was given two jobs, two very important jobs, actually. First, she was put in charge of the U.S. border security and the border. And she never showed up. She's never gone. She never went there once. And the border is the worst border in the history of the world, not just in the number of years, the worst. We had the best border in history. She has the worst border in the history of the world. And then she was sent to Europe to deter Russia from attacking Ukraine. How did that work out? Not too good. Both times the result was a deadly failure. Since Kamala was made border czar, the Biden-Harris administration has lost track of an estimated 150,000 children, many of whom have undoubtedly been raped, trafficked, killed, or horribly abused. I think of it, 150,000 children are missing. Missing, they're gone. Nobody knows where they are. Many are not with us any longer. She's 100% for the Green News scam, supports banning the sale of gas-powered cars, who wants to drive an electric car for the rest of your life? Does that you don't want to drive for 45 minutes and then stop for three hours. Is that what you say? And once the American energy industry totally shut down, starting with Pennsylvania fracking and Texas drilling. No drilling in Texas, no fracking in Pennsylvania. We just got a poll from Pennsylvania with 12 points up. That's a lot. We got a poll from Texas with 16 points up. And we have some great people from Texas here tonight. And as a senator, Kamala sided with socialist Bernie Sanders. He's a real socialist. He's serious. But not as bad as Biden turned out to be. Bernie's embarrassed by some of the things that Biden did because they push him around. It's the ultra far left government takeover of the entire health care system. And I don't think Kamala Harris's California socialism is going to go down well with the people of Doral, the people of Miami or the people of Florida. Because in Florida, we don't like socialism. We want our freedom, right? We want our freedom. And we have a lot of people, Marco, from Cuba, from Venezuela, from all over. And they don't want to hear about socialism or communism. Despite all the Democrat panic this week, the truth is it doesn't matter who they nominate because we are going to beat any one of them in thundering landslides. And this November is going to be amazing. It's going to be the most important election in the history of our country because our country's going down the tubes. That's a nice way of saying our country's not doing too well. We've never had anything like it. Our borders, our economy, the worst inflation ever. We have the politics on our side. We have the policies on our side that will make America great again, and they don't. They will only continue to destroy our nation. Our nation is being destroyed. Joe, Kamala, and the entire Democrat establishment. 
have been caught red-handed in the thick of the biggest scandal and the biggest cover-up. It's a cover-up. That's what it is. And I said it when they hit this guy in the basement and then they cheated on the election. It's a cover-up. It's the biggest cover-up in political history. As you know, they are all co-conspirators in the sinister plot to defraud the American public about the cognitive abilities of the man in the Oval Office. Sometimes he's not there often. Laughing Kamala, L-A-F-F-I-N apostrophe. <laughs> Laughing. Laughing Kamala was in on it. Crazy Nancy Pelosi, who, by the way, is also very cognitively impaired. Have you watched her lately? She's not doing too well. She's not doing too well. She's I think she's worse than Joe, you want to know that. She was in on it. Crying Chuck Schumer. You ever see him cry? He cries when he wants the, the phoniest crying I've ever seen. <laughs> crying Chuck Schumer was in on it. Every Democrat cabinet member was in on it. They all knew this guy was grossly incompetent, and every Democrat in the House and the Senate was in on it. It was a scam. The American people can never trust this group of liars ever again. They put our country at great risk and danger. That's why we are going to sweep them all out of office this November. I believe it'll be an election like no other. But the biggest problem for the radical left Democrats is that their candidates are very much, if you take a look, mentally deficient. Is that a nice statement? They are mentally deficient. I'm saying that because the other term is too tough. The biggest problem is that their policies are no good. Their policies are horrible. Americans want strong borders, not open borders. We want low taxes, not high taxes. You know, they want to increase your taxes four times by four times. We want a strong military, not a woke military. And we don't have a woke. We have some woke generals at top, but they'll be gone so fast, your head will spin. But we have a great military. We have a military that defeated ISIS in four weeks once I got in. We want no inflation, not 30 or 50 percent inflation, which is what you had. Think of it. You were destroyed. People were destroyed with the inflation. I don't even order bacon anymore. You know, bacon's gone up like five. I said, it's too expensive. I don't want it. I don't want it. No, it's gone up many times, right? Byron likes bacon. Bacon, I think maybe, how many stand up, Byron? Byron, how good is Byron? They say it's gone up four times since I, four times. So we don't eat bacon anymore, right? No more. We want American energy independence, not all electric cars and the Green New Scam. It's the greatest scam. Above all, we want America first, not America last. They want America last. They, what they're doing to our country is not even believable. That's why Florida is going to defeat the radical left Democrat hoaxers and liars and the election day. We are going to tell crooked Joe Biden, Joe, you've done a horrible job. You're fired. Get out, Joe. You're fired. You know, it's only 103 degrees out here. So, you know, they built all these, they call them, sir, we have many water spots. I said, what about one for me? Do I have one? I don't have one, Marco. They gave water spots. Everybody has a, call it a water spot. Well, water comes out, you get, they don't have anything for me. I'm being drenched up here. With your vote, I will begin saving our country from every Biden disaster starting the moment I lift my hand from the Bible after taking the oath of office. We're going to do it on day one. On day one, we're going to do it. I will seal the border, stop the invasion. We have an invasion coming through our southern border. And by the way, you know who wants that? You know who wants that invasion stopped the most? Hispanic people, because they don't want their jobs taken. They don't want their homes taken. And you know who it affects the most is black people, because these people are coming in and taking jobs at a level that nobody's ever seen before. What they've done to our country is unbelievable. But we want to send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home where they belong. 
remember, remember, as I said, they come from prisons, they come from jails. All these countries are at record low numbers of crime. They're sending us their criminals from Caracas and Venezuela. Caracas, Venezuela. Next year we'll meet in Venezuela because it will be safe. Their, pr their crime has gone down 72% because they've sent all of their drug dealers, their criminals, and most of their prisoners into our country. But that's true with most countries. And if I were running one of the countries throughout the world, not just in South America, I would be doing exactly the same thing. I would have done it faster than they've done it. But our country is being destroyed. Two weeks ago, it was revealed that Biden and Harris have allowed more than 50 radical Islamic terrorists, some of the worst in the world, by the way, to cross our border and remain at large in our country. And we have no idea where they are. They have no idea also where these terrorists are, but Joe and Kamala are simply carrying on with business as usual, holding fundraisers, taking afternoon naps. And as Joe says, I want to go to the beach today. The guy thinks he looks good in a bathing suit. Did you ever see? No, somebody in his staff told him, you look great in a bathing suit. He can't lift the chair. You know, those chairs are meant for children and old people to lift. Old people and children. And he can't lift them. They weigh about four ounces. When I'm president, I promise you this, I will not rest until we have found these radical Islamic terrorists and throw them the hell out of our country. We're going to get them out of here. And we will not let them back in. So many people, so many people, very few were thrown out, but the ones that came back in during this Biden administration of open borders, who the hell wants open borders? How crazy is it? Under the Biden border disaster, other countries are emptying out their prisons and their jails. They're emptying out their mental institutions. And I go a step further. You know what an insane asylum is, right? Did anyone ever see the lovely movie Silence of the Lambs? Did you see it? Did you ever hear of Hannibal Lecter? He was a lovely man. He would love to have you for dinner. He will take you. You had many people for dinner. Well, we have a lot of people coming in. They always say, oh, that's terrible, that Trump would say. He is rambling about Hannibal Lecter. No, I'm not rambling. That's a, We are allowing people from insane asylums and mental institutions into our country by the tens of thousands, and they're closing them down in other countries. Because, you know the cost, savings, and all of the savings? And sending bloodthirsty terrorists, savage gang members, and child predators into the United States to prey on our people, to prey on you, to prey on everybody. They're coming not only from South America, but from all over the world, from Asia, Africa, and every other place. They're coming from all over the world. Two weeks ago, I spoke to the grieving mother, Jocelyn Nungari, a precious 12-year-old girl from Houston who is tied up, stripped, assaulted, raped, strangled to death, after walking the block to a 7-Eleven store on the corner, her body was dumped near the side of the road in a shallow creek, charged with Jocelyn's heinous murder. Beautiful, beautiful girl. The mother is devastated. Like, I mean, pretty much, I would say, over. The mother, I don't know, I spoke to the mother. Mother is just, as you would be, as anybody would be. Charged with Jocelyn's heinous murder are two illegal aliens who Joe Biden set loose into our country. He let them loose, and they knew who they were. They came across our border claiming they feared for their lives. No, other people feared for They feared for their lives when they saw these two guys. They didn't fear at all. They had no fear. Tough, they're tough people. And Joe Biden and his group of people let them in. We're going to bring back, by the way, we're bringing back Tom Holman. We're bringing back all of the guys that did such a great job in the border. We had the greatest border in history. Brandon Judd, great people. These are great people. One of them was in the country for only 20 days before ending Jocelyn's beautiful American life. And recently in Virginia, at Trump National Golf Club in the Potomac River, I had lunch with the mother of, and the sister of Rachel Morin. Rachel was a 37-year-old beautiful mother of five who was attacked, raped, and brutally murdered while out on a run. She was running. She always wanted to keep herself in good shape, her mother told me. She was a beautiful person. Police believe the sadistic monster charged with Rachel's death first killed another woman in another country, then fled across 
Joe Biden's wide open border into the United States, after which he attacked a nine year old girl and her mother in a home, home invasion in Los Angeles before murdering Rachel in Maryland. When I return to the White House, we will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs and cities and towns. We're going to stop it. We will shut down deadly sanctuary cities. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. We will close up our border, and we want people to come in, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. We have no choice. And as I say, and I say it all the time, and I already said it to you, no one has been hurt more by the Biden invasion than our great African American and Hispanic American populations under Crooked Joe, 109% of all net job creation over the last year has gone to migrants. Did you know that? Almost every job that was created has gone to migrants. In fact, more than every job. It's crushing wages for American workers, draining resources for American citizens, and stealing American jobs. And they are stealing them at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Joe Biden wants to be the president for illegal aliens, but I will be the president for law-abiding Americans of every background, every walk of life, and every race, religion, color, and creed. Joe Biden's job numbers are fake. They're fake numbers, and the fake media knows it, but they don't look at all of them back there. Oh, that's a lot, Marco. That's a lot, Marco. I think they probably think I'm going to be announcing that Marco is going to be vice president. Because that's a lot of press. That's a lot of press. There are also overwhelmingly part-time jobs, which really means that there are second jobs of people who are struggling to get by. They're being taken by the illegal migrants that are coming into our country in these record numbers. We've never seen anything. It, it is indeed an invasion. When I return to the White House, I will once again be the greatest jobs president that God has ever created. And like we had five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, we will have full-time jobs at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We had the greatest economy in the history of the planet. Well-paying jobs and jobs that can support a home and a family very, very easily. We had it all. As everyone knows, the Biden economy is a nightmare for working families under Crooked Joe. Inflation price hikes, and they've cost, listen to this, $28,000. $28,000. And you know, under Trump, you made $14,000. That's a big swing. Under Biden and Harris, half of Americans are not taking a vacation at all this summer because they can't afford to do it. Most say it's because the cost of daily life is so high, no matter what they make, they can't. Because, you know, they like to say 20%, 29%, 26%, 31%. I think your inflation, your real inflation is way over 50%, and I believe that. Meanwhile, Crooked Joe has spent almost 50% of his presidency on vacation. Almost all of it, including many, many weeks on the beach. And mansions are in, think of this, here's a guy that's been a politician all his life. He's got homes in the Virgin Islands, Nantucket, Lake Tahoe, Kiowa Island. I mean, where the hell did I get all this money, Byron? He's got more homes than I do. What the hell is going on with him? And that home he's got in Delaware is pretty nice, right? But remember they said it was, it was his son's home. You know, his son is running it, right? You know that, right? You know that. He's running our government! And Jill is helping. Jill is helping. Where's Hunter? Remember the sign, where's Hunter? Where's Hunter? He's in the White House. Hunter is in the White House running government right now, they say. That's interesting. No wonder Joe doesn't want to give up the job. His own staff says that the only Hours he works are 10 a.m. to 4. Does anybody here have a job like that? Raise your hand. And 
I doubt he even spends that. And today he's with the people from NATO. And these people are sharp. I know them very well, every one of them. They're very smart. They're at the top of their game. And they're saying, what the hell is with this guy? We, don't, we can't figure it out. You know, I saved NATO because when I went down, hey, Barack Hussein Obama, has anyone ever heard of him? He would go. He would go and, you know, go to wherever the holding the NATO meeting and he'd make a nice speech and he'd leave. And Bush would go and make a nice speech and he would leave in all fairness. Bush, Bush, oh yeah. But he'd make a nice speech and he'd leave. They'd all go make speeches and they'd leave. They wouldn't even stay there a day. I went and didn't make a nice speech. I said, what the hell are you doing? Nobody's paying. Nobody was paying. But I didn't want to be obnoxious because I felt, you know, it's the first time I'd ever done this. I went, I didn't even know what the hell NATO was too much before, but it didn't take me long to figure it out, like about two minutes. And the first thing I figured out was they weren't paying. We were paying. We were paying almost fully for NATO. And I said, that's unfair, but I didn't want to make a big mess. You know, I was president for about 15 minutes. And I didn't want to, you know, go after NATO is my first thing. But six months later, I went back to the second meeting and I said, you know what? You're not paying your bills. You got to pay your bills. Somebody stood up from one of the countries, 28 countries, and only seven were paying what they should be paying. 28 countries. Think of that. And these countries, now we added a couple, but 28 countries. And they said, sir, could I ask you? I said, you have to pay your bills. They said, sir, may I ask you a question? If we don't pay our bills, will you protect us from Russia? I said, you mean you're delinquent? They said, yes, we're delinquent. Let's say we're delinquent. Would you protect us? I said, no, I will not protect you from Russia. The money came in by the billions. It came in. There's never been, right? There has never been. Where's Waltz? Where's Congressman Waltz? He, am I correct, Mr. Kai? This guy loves the military. He gets sick when he looks at what we're doing, but he loves it. Is that right? I got billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars came pouring in because he said, oh, this guy's a little different than the other guys. But Joe Biden is a part-time president while you are working overtime to get by. He's a part-time president. He doesn't work. Well, he can't work because he's mentally no good. He's shot. But he was shot 25 years ago. You know, he was never a smart person. In fact, Ted Kennedy was actually a friend of mine. Can you believe it? Because of Palm Beach. He lived in Palm Beach. The Kennedy compound, for those that think the Kennedys are struggling, they had the Kennedy compound, but I did him a favor and he liked me and I was very good to him, actually. And I said to him, Ted, let me ask you a question. Who's the smartest senator? Tell me. And he gave me a name, but I won't say it because I can't stand the guy, okay? I'll tell you later, Marco, who he said. It wasn't you because you weren't there yet, so Kevin. But I said, who's the smartest? He gave me a name. I said, so who's the dumbest? He goes, probably Joe. This is like 20 years ago, 20 something years ago. Probably Joe. I said, who's Joe? He said, Joe Biden. I said, really? He's a dumb guy. Yeah, he didn't understand policy. He didn't understand tax. He didn't understand anything. He's hale and hearty and well met. And outside of his really bad hair, his you know, sort of a good-looking guy at the time, right? I think the facelift did not help him. <laughs> now, he said, I'm going to get myself a facelift. I'm going to give it one more try. You know, he tried it three or four times. He tried it three or four times, and he said, I'm going to look great. I'm going to get a facelift. You know what took him so long to get into the race? The facelift didn't work. Under my leadership, we will make America affordable again so that every American family can afford to take a thing called a vacation. Is that right? And on day one, we will throw out Bidenomics and replace it with a thing called MAGA-nomics. We will quickly build the greatest economy in the history of the world. I will repeal every disastrous Biden regulation, of which there are many. Cancel Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate. How stupid. And we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill like we never drilled. We were energy independent four years ago. Think of it. We're going to be energy dominant within months. Four years ago, energy independent. I will deliver large tax cuts, larger than you even have now. Do you know, I tell the story to people. It's hard to believe. 
I reduced taxes, the largest tax cuts in the history of our country. I reduced them, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts many years ago. And with a lower rate, the following year, we took in much more tax money. Think of it. So we're getting much less. That meant for small businesses, large businesses, because that's what the job creators are. For middle-income people, low-income people, everybody. And he wants to let that expire. And if you do, your taxes are going to go up about five times, four times to five times more. How would you feel if they raise your taxes by four or five times? Not to and remember that, remember that when you're going into the voting booth, I, do I want to pay? Do I want to have a terrible president who has no idea where the hell he is? And less importantly, do I want to pay four times more tax? And remember, what I'm going to do is something that nobody has ever even thought about doing. No tax on tips. For all of you waitresses, for all of you caddies at Doral. You know, I, I came to Doral and there were some caddies at the shack. We call it Caddy Shack. It's the most beautiful Caddy Shack I've ever seen. We have the world's most beautiful. They sit down and watch television. And uh, I never had this before. They were out for a round. They're very sweaty, very, very sweaty guys. You know, look, they're carrying bags all over the place. Not easy. It's 100 degrees out today, 103, 104. And they saw me and they gave me the biggest hug. I said, get the hell out of here. You're soaking wet. I said, why do you like me so much today? But in the past, you never touched me and kissed me and hugged me. It's very simple, sir. No tax on tips. Thank you very much. So for caddies, for waitresses, for I mean, it's tremendous. And it's a very complicated thing, frankly, uh, for the government to collect. But they've issued new rules and regulations that make it very bad for people. I, the reason I thought of this, I was in Nevada, where we're leading, by the way, a lot. We're up by like 14 points in Nevada. That's supposed to be a little bit Democrat territory. But we're leading in Nevada. And a waitress came over, beautiful waitress. And I never like talking about physics. She's beautiful inside because you never talk about a person's look, ever. You never mention it. The other day, I got very angry. Some man called Chris Christie fat. And I said, sir, and then he said he was a pig. I said, sir, Chris Christie is not a fat pig. Please remember that. He is not a fat pig. Please take it back. And the guy's looking at me like, really? No, we have to defend people. You can't call people fat. I said about nine times, he is not a fat pig. <laughs> so every time you leave a tip for the next four months, because it's going to go into effect very quickly, make sure that you write on the receipt, vote Trump for no tax on trips. No tax on tips. That's a good one. No, but the waitress said, I said, how are you doing? She said, I worked there a long time. Great person, beautiful person. And she said, oh, it's brutal with the government, what they do to us, it's crazy. They come, you know, they put on 88,000 people to go and take advantage of people like that. And she said, it's brutal. I said, you know, I have a great idea. How about no tax on tips? That was the extent of my study, one waitress. <laughs> but it's true, it made so much. Isn't it funny that nobody ever thought of that but me? Isn't that weird? But it's a great thing and they deserve their money. They work hard for it, they deserve it. They deserve it. Marco, you're gonna vote for it, I hope. Well, you may or may not be there to vote for it, but you'll be involved. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. That's why they are weaponizing law enforcement against their opponents. They are turning America into communist Cuba or socialist Venezuela. By the way, Venezuela is much more than socialist by now. You know that, right? We got it. Who's here from Venezuela? Who's here from Cuba? You know, I had it all done with Cuba. I was going to, they didn't rig the election. Within six months, we were going to have that all worked out. They were ready. Then Biden came in, right? Then Biden came in, he opened it up. It's a disgrace. Trying to silence dissent and put their political adversaries behind bars. He wants to put me behind bars. My parents are looking down saying this was not planned when he went to the Wharton School of Finance. The great Alphonse Capone, you know Alphonse, he's a very nice gentleman, very fine man, Scarface they call him in some territory. He has a scar from here to here. He didn't get it by playing tiddlywinks either. 
No, he was a guy that, see this man right up here, he's a very tough guy. I know him, he's tough as hell. If he ever had dinner with Al Capone and Al Capone didn't like him, he'd look at him and say, are you mocking me? And this guy would go, no, no, <laughs> I promise I'm not. But if Alphonse didn't like you, you'd never see him again, darling. Your husband would never be home again. He'd right now be a part of a foundation of a very tall building. But Al Capone got indicted less than I did. Think of it, Alphonse Capone. My parents would look down, they were so great. They're saying, how did this ever happen to my son? But you know what? We're finding out, and everybody knew, and I've been saying it's a total fraud. It was election interference, that's all it was. All Biden, they're all Biden indictments, the local ones, the state ones. They're all Biden indictments, a bad guy. And he's unleashed a horrible thing on this country. He's really done, wouldn't you say, Byron? He has unleashed a horrible thing because, you know, that can happen the other way around, too. But the Supreme Court came out with an incredible decision this week, and it was, I have great respect for the courage that they've shown. Great, great respect for the courage that they, they've shown. They have, they have great intellect and great uh, insight, incredible insight. They got it. They saw what was happening, not only with me, but with other people, what they did with the Fisher verdict. You know the Fisher verdict, right? That has to do with the J6 people. They had great, great, great decisions this last week, decisions on regulations that are going to free up businesses and allow businesses to hire people and thrive. All of their persecution is only happening because I am running for president and leading very big in every single poll. And we're not just leading against crooked Joe Biden, we're leading against Kamala and we're leading against everybody else and our senators and our congressmen are coming in with us. We're going to have a big, big Day, most important day. The radical left Democrats have spent this entire election posing as defenders of democracy. You ever hear Biden? Uh, he's a threat to democracy. He doesn't even know what the hell the term is. He's, Trump is a threat to democracy. This guy. Low IQ. He's a low IQ individual. But they are lying in the entire world at Joe Biden's condition. I mean, you see his condition. You see them frantically trying to overturn the results of 50 state primaries and install a new candidate at the behest of their very rich donors. Do you know that we took in record numbers over the last four weeks and most of it was taken in with small donors, $61 on average, $61. And those people vote, but the Democrats, I think that their funding is stopping because I think they're they're rich donors. They have a lot of rich donors. We have some, but we, we don't really focus on it. We focus on the small donor. Very, to me, every, one thing, every small donor votes. The rich donors, they're in Monte Carlo during the election. You know, how's the election going? Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's really, he is a major threat to democracy. And Democrats are the ones who really want to destroy democracy in our country. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I do. Because I'm being indicted for you Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's as simple as that. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun being indicted. Thank you. I didn't know. What does it mean to be indicted? Thank you. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. And I always will be standing in their way. We're not going to let happen to our country what's happened to so many countries that many of you people were very much involved in through your parents and grandparents. You know what happened to so many of those countries. We're thrilled to be joined tonight by many fantastic Florida Patriots, including a man who's become really a friend of mine. We had a vicious campaign for a while. 
and he was tough and he was smart. And I got to really know him well over the years, and he's a fantastic guy, Senator Marco Rubio. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. And you have a great tandem because you have another great senator who was a great governor, fantastic governor, Senator Rick Scott. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. We have a lot of congressmen. Let's introduce it. What the hell else do we have to do, right? Should we introduce? And by the way, at the end, do you want the music or do you want no music? Music, ready? Music or no music, ready? Who wants the music? Who wants a little bit quicker, no music? I think we have music tonight. Get the music ready. Get the music ready. We have some incredible, talented warriors, representatives. Corey Mills. Corey, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Great guy. Brian Mast. We love Brian. Thank you, Brian. Mike Waltz. Thank you, Mike. Doing great. A man I'm not going to get into a fight with him anytime soon. Byron Donalds, who's fantastic. His wife, by the way, is a true expert on education. I say, stay ready. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for being here. Appreciate it. Great, great person. Maria Salazar. Thank you, Maria. Right. Thank you very much. Carlos Jimenez. Carlos. Good man. Mario Diaz Ballard. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. You have a fantastic lieutenant governor who's here, Jeanette Nunez. Jeanette, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. And Florida State Senators. Debbie Mayfield. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. Ileana Garcia. Thank you. Anna Maria Rodriguez. Thank you. Great people. State Representatives Jessica Baker. Randy Fine. Where's Randy Fine? Good. Thanks, Randy. Kevin Steele, Paula Stark, Juan Carlos Porras, Alina Garcia, David Barrero, Fabian Basebe. Fabian, thank you. Tom Fabricio. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Vicky Lopez, a very good guy, fantastic. Person, great politician, frankly, but he loves the state. Incoming speaker of the Florida House, Danny Perez. Thank you, Danny. Good job. Good luck, Danny. That should be an easy job. Good luck. And Alex Rizzo. Thank you, Alex, very much. A person who I know personally does a fantastic job is the mayor of Doral, Christy Fraga. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. Vice Mayor Oscar Pugue Carvey. Oscar, the Vice Mayor. Thank you, Oscar. Councilwoman Digna Cabral. Thank you, Debra. Thank you very much. Sweetwater Mayor Jose Pepe Diaz. I've known him a long time. Pepe. Western Mayor Margaret Brown. Thank you, Margaret. Well, we got a lot of politics. You have, to, you have no idea. I'm, I'm introducing about 25%. We did it by the luck of the draw. Miami-Dade County Commissioners, Kevin Cabrera and J.C. Bermudez. J.C., thank you. Great people, great politicians, but good politicians. The next Miami-Dade County Sheriff, Rosie Cordero Stutz. Thank you, Rosie. Good luck. She has my endorsement. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Carlos Trujillo. Carlos, 
Carlos Trujillo. Thank you, Carlos. Great job you're doing. A friend of all of ours and a wo I, this woman is amazing. Laura Loomer. Where is she? Where is Laura? She is amazing. Felix Lusarte. Felix. Where is Felix? My lawyer. He's my lawyer. How am I doing? Am I getting the damn zoning done? Is he all? He's doing a great job. And my sons, and we have one of my sons. This is the first time he's ever done it. First of all, one you know, and he's an incredible guy. He's very tough. He's very, very strong. Great speaker. Great talent. Donald Trump Jr. And another son who's here tonight. I love when my sons and family come. You know, it's really nice. Somebody who's fantastic, works so hard, so smart, has a great wife, a great wife, as does Don. Oh, you, you like Laura, right? Let's get off, Eric, and let's talk about Laura. Laura's only the head of the Republican Party. She's upwardly mobile. She's upwardly mobile. But a man who's done an incredible job at the company, and there's, I think there has never been a human being that's had more subpoenas. Every day, Congress would serve a subpoena on him, and he has done some job, I'll tell you. Eric Trump. Thank you. Great job. And a very young man. This is a young man. He just turned 18. Oh, look at this. A very young man who's now going to college, got into every college he wanted to, and he made his choice. And he's a, he's a very good guy, I'll tell you. You know, I'm not allowed to call them boy, but he is my boy. He's my boy. They're all my boys, right? When you have sons, they can be any age, they're your boy, they're always going to be, and he's a very special guy, Baron Trump. This is the first time he's ever done that. Baron. Where is Baron? Stand up, look at him. That's the first time he's done it. That's the first time, right? Hey, you're pretty popular. I, he might be more popular than Don and Eric. We got to talk about that. Hey, Don, we got to talk about this, huh? All right. So, Baron, it's good to have you. Welcome to the scene, Baron. I don't know. He had such a nice, easy life. Now it's a little bit changed. Anyway, a special guy, right? Also, some grandchildren who are very talented. Uh, two of them are great golfers, really great golfers. You all know about Kai. Where's Kai? Kai. And a real little killer. She hits a long ball for her size. She can barely lift the club until she swings. She's, her swing is perfect. Chloe. And Don Jr. is here, somewhere, I think. Uh, Vanessa is here. Oh, there he is. Good. Hi, Don. What a good group. Vanessa Trump, stand up. Thanks. Thank you, Don Jr. That's good. Don the third, and also uh, a real friend of the family. She's been Friendly, you know, she started off in the five years ago and she made that show very successful. She was the star of that show, actually. And she was always good to me a long time, long before I knew her in this capacity. And uh, she was really a big uh, star on television. Very, very big. The five, when it was ver when it was just in its infancy and it was hot as it could be. Kimberly Guilfoyle. Thank you, Kimberly. And she hasn't stopped. So thank you all for being here. And I know I didn't uh, introduce many, many congressmen and likes of others, but I think we have to get back to the business at hand. Is it too hot for anybody? No.
that thing. Once you get used to the fact that you're soaking wet, from the moment we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years of the history of our country. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we, we, all of us together, win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and I will prevent our nation, and we will prevent the whole world from entering World War III, because that's where we are. We're very close to World War III, and Biden doesn't have a clue. We should have never allowed, if you think about it, Russia, Ukraine would have never happened. October 7th, the attack on Israel would have never happened. Inflation would have never happened. Think of our country if the election wasn't rigged. Think of it. Think where we'd be if they didn't rig that election. So we're not going to let it happen again because our country won't exist. It would be the la I believe it would be the last election we've ever had if anything happened. I really believe it. We're not going to let that happen. You got to get out and vote. If I was president, though, the and think of it, Afghanistan, one of the most embarrassing moments in the history of our country would also never have happened. It would have never happened. You know, Ukraine, when you think Ukraine, I had a very good relationship with Putin. We talked about it. It was the apple of his eye. Would have never happened. I told him, can't do it. You're not going to do it. October 7th, the attack on Israel. I knew it so well. They had no money because the purveyor of funds was Iran and Iran was broke. They had all sorts of sanctions. Nobody could buy. China couldn't buy. China was a massive buyer of oil from Iran. I said, if you buy from Iran, you can't do business in the United States. And they did very well in the United States. And they didn't buy nobody. But Iran was broke. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for Hamas. And we had no terror. You know, I always wanted to talk about it when I was president. I was three years in, three and a half years in. I said, I want to just brag a little bit. I want to say that we had no terror. There were no terror attacks in four years, but I wanted to brag about it. But I wanted to wait till I got out. And now I brag about it all the time. We had very few terrorists allowed into our country. We had a year 2019 where the charts come out, how many terrorists enter the country. Now, I think they're wrong because I can't believe it, but they actually had no terrorists, zero terrorists came in 2019. That was a Trump year. Now we have thousands and thousands of terrorists pouring into our country from all over the world, and they're the worst terrorists in the world. They're the biggest and the worst, and we got them living in our country. They actually put down 2019, Trump, no terrorists, zero. I don't believe that, but that's what they have. And that was done by Border Patrol and others, State Department. I'll take it. I don't believe it, but it was very close to nothing, and they actually have zero terrorists came into our country. We were tough on it. And we would not have Russian warships and nuclear submarines surrounding Cuba 60 miles off our coast. You know that, right? For all of you people in Cuba, congratulations. You're now being protected by Russia. Congratulations. Can you imagine that the press, the fake news, those people, they don't even talk about it. We have nuclear submarines and five warships in Cuba, and they don't even talk about it. If that happened to me as president, it would be the biggest story every single day. But they don't talk about it because they're fake and corrupt news. When I was in the White House, I canceled Barack Hussein Obama's deal with the Cuban dictatorship and reimposed tough sanctions on that regime. They were ready to break. They were all set. And then we had the election taken away, robbed, rigged. Joe Biden has gone weak and soft on Cuban communists. As you know, you know better than anybody, so many of you here. And he's abandoned the brave Cuban dissidents while the Cuban people are suffering, starving, and dying in Cuba. Would have been all solved very quickly. As president, I will again stand with the people of Cuba in their long quest for justice, liberty, and freedom. In my next term, we will build a great iron dome over our country, a dome like has never been seen before, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will be entirely made in the USA, right here in, right here in your state, right here in Florida. We'll build a big section. You have a lot of defense. We moved a lot of companies into Florida for defense purposes. I will not cut one penny from Social Security or Medicare, 
and I will not raise the retirement age by one day. Biden is going to do that because he's allowing these people that come in to go on to Social Security and Medicare, to go into the hospitals. And, you know, we want to be nice. But no country can sustain this. No country can sustain it. I kept that promise for four straight years, and I will keep it again. We have plenty of other resources. We're not going to touch Social Security or Medicare. If the millions of Biden migrants became citizens, Medicare and Social Security will be gone. They'll be gone. They'll be gone. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever, ever, ever been before. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. Right now, if you leave Florida, oh, let's go, darling. Let's look at the Jefferson Memorial. Let's look at the Washington Monument. Let's go and look at some of the beautiful scenes. And you end up getting shot, mugged, raped. We're going to take over our capital, and we're going to run it tough and smart, and we're going to beautify it. We're going to get all the graffiti off the marble. We're going to fix the roads and the medians, which are falling down all over the streets. We're going to make our capital beautiful again. We're going to do the same thing with our cities, even though Democrat run. We're going to work with Democrat governors and mayors if we have to. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Can you imagine? Can you imagine even having to say that? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech in our country. And I will secure our elections once and for all. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must win. You must get out and vote. We want a landslide, and let's call it this, too big to rig. Too big to rig. Thank you. Look at all the front row Joes. Oh, wow. Wow, they're They've been to like 200 rallies. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to have you. Great. It's a great honor. These are real patriots. They make a lot of money, I guess, because they're at every rally. I go to California, I have a rally, I have the front row Joes there. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration has done. Think of it. I used to say five, remember? Six months ago, I'd say five worse. I added 10. I could go higher than that. There's nobody that's done destruction to our country. And now we find out he probably doesn't even know he did it, okay? <laughs> Joe, why did you do it? I did what do I, what did I do? So if you want to save America, get your friends, get your family, get everyone you know and vote, you got to vote early, vote absentee, vote on election day, Vote any time you want, but vote and follow your vote. Make sure that it gets counted. You can do that. Follow that vote because these people cheat like nobody's ever cheated before. Frankly, they're no good at policy, but they're good at cheating. And if you want to help us ensure election integrity, sign up at protectthevote.com. So in conclusion, from Jacksonville to Miami, from Tampa to Tallahassee, from the beautiful place that I know very well, destined to right here in Doral, we inherit the legacy of generations of American patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the ocean, settled the continent, Tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up those great, beautiful skyscrapers, won two world wars, 
And from right here in this beautiful state, launched our brave American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on the face of the moon. Together, they made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world.